We are live. Live and direct. Episode 23. The Michael Jordan episode. The Michael Jordan episode? Who else is number 23? I don't know. It must be the Michael Jordan episode. I forgot he was number 23. <clears throat> you know what Michael Jordan did at one point in his career? He sang a song? No, he retired. It went a little bit like this. Already time. Already time. Already on. Excellent. I'm sorry, Adam. I can't already on with you anymore. Why can't you already on with me anymore? I'm retired. You're retired? From what? You're an artist. Artists just get to sit at home and paint. How can you retire from that? Well, right now we're not sitting at home painting, are we? No. That was sarcastic, by the way. I think if anyone's watched Party Time up until now, you know there's a lot more to it than sitting and painting. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm sad to hear hear this news. So like, uh, explain a bit uh, what's going on. I don't get it. This is like coming out of left field. I I, <laughs> I can't spill the beans. I can't say it all up uh, at Party Time and uh, and give away the whole show. But uh, I'm retired, so it's gonna be like normal Party Time. I'm gonna pass you the mic and I'm gonna listen to what you have to say about your week. You spent the week at uh, Buddha Bazaar. I spent the weekend at Buddha Bazaar, yeah. It was kind of bizarre. Um, <laughs> it was uh, like the event was get very much catered to, to my crowd, um, but it, like there was a few things that I ne learned that I needed to up my game on uh, my vending uh, in person. Um, two things that I needed that I discovered that I need to um, add to my booth is um, I need a chair that's tall that I can sit on <clears throat> and still be at eye level with people. Because mm. standing on my feet all weekend, um, especially during times when it's a little slow, especially during the morning when I was setting up, you know, from 10 to 11, it was pretty slow for the first hour. And then on Sunday at this event, there was another big event in Montreal, the Terry Fox Run. Um, there was a ton and ton of traffic because all kinds of streets were closed off for this charity run. Um, so it made driving around the part of town where this event was held at very difficult. And uh, I think that's a big part of the reason not that many people were there on Sunday, but it was a pretty slow day. And, um, it, it's really important to be at eye level or as close as eye level as you can be based on your height and who has passes by. Of course, you. of course, we call that the Air Jordan. Yeah, the Air Jordan, the 23. This is the 23 seat. Oh, wait, isn't there a movie called 23 with Jim Carrey? A horror movie? <clears throat> it, I don't know if it's horror, but it's definitely suspense where it's just seen it everywhere. Yeah. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Michael yeah. Jordan. So and he starts go. going crazy. Yeah. Jim, if you're watching this, uh, this one's for you. Episode 23. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be the Jim, because Jim Carrey's a painter now, so it should be the Jim Carrey episode, not the Michael Jordan episode. Or it can be both. I've, they did a show in my show. Because now we get to right? hashtag Jim Carrey and Michael Jordan in this on the description on YouTube, so like, because we talked about them. So. But he did a show in Montreal, and it was like pieces of paper. It wasn't even like uh, paintings. Oh, I don't know. I follow. I, I sometimes follow what he does. I mean, he does a lot of angry political art. And, uh, I don't know. I saw a brief documentary where he was interviewed in his studio and talked about how painting is like a way for him to express himself and get like things out of his head that bother him. And I can totally relate to that side mm -hmm. of it. So yeah, me too. You know, so I guess that's and it's a good way to, to make a message. And uh... so the one back to like before I lose the train of thought. The first thing I need is a chair that's elevated Air so Air like Jordan. Air Jordan chair yeah the chair Jordan <laughs> so you can sit and look at people in the eye um and kind of be elevated above your table and you know just be at the proper height like um I don't even know what you call that like a work station chair I, you know one of the ones that's elevated up and it's got like a ring they'll rest your feet I'm sure you need something else I'm sure you need like an Air Max or something well, no, the next the thing the next thing I needed was the sign yeah I need a, a sign and they have um you know, I could get one that's not retractable, just a banner, but um, they have these trade show banners that are called retractable banners. You can get them on Vista Print. And this is just about broadcasting who you are at a larger... Yeah, and here's... At a larger distance and with more clarity, so when they come up, they know what they're coming up to. Exactly, and here's why, for me, it was an issue this weekend. I have a lot of merch, and I have a lot of um, different items. You know, I have uh, clothing and uh, bookmarks and different uh, silk scarves and all kinds of things with my designs on them available for people. 
So when somebody approaches my table, it's not always clear that I'm an artist. Um, because in events, I can't usually bring my largest paintings. I mostly bring my small ones, and they think they're tiles and things like that. They don't get that they're paintings, even though I put signs everywhere that says painting, acrylic paint on canvas, in English and in French. <laughs> anyway. Because you have a lot of products. Yeah, I have a lot of products. So I understand how it can be overwhelming and confusing to somebody that doesn't know what they're looking at. So, um, you know, whereas I do local events where, you know, it's two blocks from my house and uh, I run into people that I went to high school with or that were my teachers or scout leaders or like people that went to my church or people that, you know, like I went to elementary school, like, uh, you know, the, I just end up running into a lot of people that know who I am without needing to know anything else about me. They just, hi, Adam, they know who I am face to face. Whereas if I'm at these other events that are a little further from home, I'm realizing people don't know who I am as much and it's not as clear what I do. So having a sign is important. And um, for the slow times of day <clears throat> or it, it, events where, you know, it doesn't work out and there's a lot of, not a lot of people coming by your table. It's good to have somewhere to just, you know, rest your feet and your back mm -hmm. so that you don't miss those opportunities of the people that do come by and you're sitting there because you're tired of standing all day for 20 minutes when no one's walking by. So it's really important at those slow events to give yourself as much chance as possible to at least break even or make a little bit of money to like be at eye level with people as much as possible. But it's hard to stand all day when you're bored and uh, nothing's going on. So having one of those elevated chairs uh, is going to be next investment I make along with, uh, you know, one of those retractable banner signs that <clears throat> you can store them easily and mm -hmm. uh, just... <laughs> what are you going to write on an event? No, well, you design them on Vistaprint. What are you going to write, though? I, I probably add a Millward Nexus Visions uh, art and design, something like that. Just make it clear. You know, not... not I would write <clears throat> five star Mandela painter. Mm. And you're like, whoa, five star? And you're like, yeah. actually, <laughs> my rating on Facebook is five star. Check it out. Five star Facebook. All right, I may just, at the next event, you know what I noticed was kind of funny? There was a lot of like spiritual healers and things like that, and tarot card readers, and people were, were lining up to, to take advantage of those services on, this, on the busy day on the Saturday. So um, I might just. Just cancel the whole art thing. Cause it's tough futures. No, you're 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 in retirement from your art career, so I think it's We're going into business together. I, no, I'm starting the Church of Blue Leg Jesus. And I'm gonna go like Have you heard the, the good word? word? Have you heard the word of Blue Leg Jesus? Have you heard the good word? Exactly. You can retire too. Yeah. Get on retire. Just join the church of Blue Leg Jesus. Here's our pastor and minister, Bob Ross three thousand. If you retire. <clears throat> You'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, you know, I, uh, I I learned a few things. Even even out of a like an event that wasn't super successful, um, you know, I ba I basically broke even. I lost maybe ten or twenty bucks on the weekend. Um, on food and transit and shit. No, just period. You know, after I of course I spent money on food and whatever. You got that, that cake. That came, you know, that's things I would have bought anyway, so I don't call that a loss. I would have had to eat and I would have had to move around anyway. No, that one saving grace is that cake that you got. Pure celebration. That was cake. If we can only get that recipe. Yeah, well, we'll see. I've, uh, I've I'll come out of retirement. I've sent the request. That. I'll come out of retirement if you get that recipe. Well, you might be coming out of retirement tomorrow then, bud. Because, like, she's pretty. No, but I have to be able to. Like, the reason we're talking about the cake is both of us are on keto diet. Finding anything sweet and tasty that resembles like non-keto food isn't always easy, and we found a lady. We found the who perfect makes cake. the perfect cake. Yeah. Now this cake only needs a name. I the, think it has a chewy, name. The chewy, the chewy Susie. The chewy Susie. It's pretty good. It is pretty good. And if with the the right font and graphic. This is a this is a million dollar cake right here. But I think Chewy Susie. No one knows how to make the Chewy Susie. The Chewy like we the know how to make the Chewy Susie once we find <laughs> out how to make the Chewy Susie. I love it. See, he's not actually retired. He's just deciding to become a baker now instead. That would be the joke, yeah, when I come out of retirement. It's because of the Chewy Susie. And then you know what? <laughs> Like put your. I know with all my like, success. Get one, of those, get one of those. Again. Yeah, exactly. Get one of those like the the paint with the you know the icing bags where you paint icing and just bootleg icing 
on your cakes. It and looks so perfect. Like, it was powdered sugar on top. It was perfect. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was perfect. As long as you hold the recipe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to have to find out. I've sent her a message. We're going to take out the baking powder and we're going to call it. Her sugar. job and her goal is to make it easy for people to go on a keto diet and to encourage them. So my gut feeling is that she does share that. I didn't ask her for the recipe because I hate I hate cooking. He doesn't hate cooking. So, like, yeah. If he was there, he would ask. And I'm around food. enough people who are buying food. They're slamming food in their face constantly. That's where our world is. Is people going around, I've worked for this money. Here's the money. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, that's me. I don't like, I, I don't enjoy cooking. I, if, for me, it's an art form I don't enjoy. My brother loves cooking. If you come with a cake in front of these people, it's going down their down their trap. Well, it went down mine, that's <laughs> for sure. When I found out I could eat this thing on my keto diet and it's, oh, it tastes amazing. It's a gold mine. Like, like I'm, I, yeah. It's, cool. it's, it's delicious. So, um, yeah. So we're going to become bakers. And uh, no, you're going to become bakers. I'm not retiring. It's a religious thing. You I'm said it was retiring. religious. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll retire. I'll be a booster. St. Susie, Chewy. <laughs> the church of... <laughs> Boo like Jesus and like that's that's By the, the sacrament. Friend, man. That's the sacrament. <laughs> the chewy Susie. <laughs> it's so good though. Uh, okay, so coming soon we will have one. We'll have one on the table one day. Yeah. The Chewy Susie. Yeah. Right now it's a because it's gonna be so easy for people that are watching a video to tell anything about it other than how it looks. No, we're gonna try it live. Live. And okay. we're gonna have live reaction. Oh, Chewy. Well, oh, this is pretty much a live reaction. <laughs> No, with, with the actual Chewy Susie. Right now, it's some, like, other cake that we just need the recipe. Yeah, they, important. yeah. It's important that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but that's business, in a sense. It is. So, like, yeah. <laughs> and art at the same time. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, at the end of the day, like, part another part of going to events is, is networking and meeting people. And, you know, um, I met some cool people. I uh, ended up buying a pendant uh, from another artisan there. And, um... You know, it was just an awesome weekend. Uh, there was a girl who was selling crystals whose table ended up being like pretty much right in front of mine. And I had my crystal grids with me and I had no crystals to put on them. So this lady was across the street. This girl it was across the street. I mean, across the way from me. Like, And so I bought a bunch of crystals from her to display on my thing. And then she came over and looked at my grid and she's like, these are beautiful. So she ended up buying a bunch of my crystal grids from me. So... Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was a good networking thing, and even though I didn't really make money, if she ends up ordering more crystal grids from me down the line, um, you know, it may end up working out in my favor that I went to this event and met this this girl. So, um, you know, good vibes at the end. And that's uh, that's part of what it's about to have an art career is trying to focus on uh, the positives, uh, leave the negatives behind as much as possible, and um, and, and how grow. many painters were there when you were at Blue was there? Uh, there was two other people who were painting. They weren't only painting. One of them had a couple of paintings with her, and she was mainly doing, like, henna. And kind of, like, the paintings were, like, a side thing. She was really focusing more on the henna. And then another one was, she did paintings, but they were more, like, done with an intention of being, like, energy healing things. Like, they weren't very detailed. They were mandalas, so it was kind of cool that that vibe was there, too. But it was a very different approach. Like, the art wasn't what she was focusing on she was focusing on the healing and the crystal she had crystals glued onto her canvas which i've never wanted to do because over time the glue will get brittle they'll break off the canvas and it'll be a ruined piece of art you know like i don't want to do that to people who spend a lot of money on my paintings give them something that i know is gonna probably fall apart mm. so um anyway yeah there were a couple other people doing, and then there was one lady that painted on feathers that was there. <clears throat> Which is, a, for her, it's like a spiritual thing, like it's found feathers, and, and painting on feathers is like a... What did she paint on? Little scenes, like birds and little... But, uh, yeah, I think... Exactly. Imagine them just being like red, and you know. No, 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 they're like actually like painted and put in a nice frame. They're, they're beautiful. I'm gonna look into that. Mm -hmm. We'll get some seagull feathers. I, 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 I don't know how she does it. Like, I don't know how the technique is done without moving the bristles of the feather as you're painting on it. I don't know how it's done, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure there's a technique to it that, uh, if you, 
go like search painting on feathers on YouTube, but like watch the rest of this episode first before you go do that. Like don't don't retire on us and be like, oh, I'm retiring on Hardy Job. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch feather painters. I have all the time in the world mm -hmm. to watch feather painting. All right. Well, if you want to talk about another cool art form, look up Ebru. Do you know what Ebru is? No. <laughs> I honestly don't. I it, it, I, I it's, a, it it's a Turkish. It's a Turkish method of painting, and basically, it's laying. Uh, and I don't know exactly what it is. If it's ink or paint or what, but it's laying ink. I guess it's for the sake of not knowing, I'm going to call it ink. They lay ink on patterns on on water and the ink that they use floats and then they lay down a paper on it after that and they pick it up mm -hmm. and like i've seen almost the same technique used in reverse where like the pattern is put and then they dip a piece of metal into it and pull it out and then it's like that pattern stays on the metal um so i don't know if those two techniques are related or it's the same materials but anyway it's a really interesting art form and uh just just for the sake of uh of looking at something pretty cool, go look it up. It's spelled E B R U, I think, Ebru, and um, it's a pretty, pretty something pretty cool to look at. What does it mean? All like, Whoa, crazy. Well, guy. it depends. There's different artists that have different styles of it. Um, you can layer them where there's like a drop, and then sh and then like, it, it's weird because of the fluid underneath. It makes the ink react in co very cool ways mm -hmm. and mix in different cool ways. And I'm into that. I'll use yeah, that and, like, and then, like, say, for example, like, you might make, like, three or four dots, and then, like, it'll come out, like, flower petals with a center, and then he goes, like, with a finger, and it'll go like that, and it'll pull down, like, a stem, you know, with, like, so it's a, it's a mix of different techniques where you can actually move it around and manipulate it with your hands or a, or a, a sticker, I don't know, I don't And know. then they put the paper on? Yeah, and then at the end there's, and I don't know, again, if it's a special kind of paper, or just a regular paper, or if it has a special coating to adhere to the ink, or whatever. Just pour it, so they suck it up. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's a super neat technique to watch, so. Yeah, anyway, so, um, now that you're retiring, uh, I guess you can share some of your uh, other business secrets that you've got. Because, like, I've been pretty busy at the last two week at events. And, um, you know, I haven't done a lot of the online things that I've needed to do over the last couple of weeks, which is, you know, it's catching up to me. I need to, I need to get back on the internet and start making some posts on all my social medias because I've kind of been ignoring them because I've been busy either getting ready for it or you know, recovering from being on my feet all weekend and price tags and getting deciding what to pack and bring to each unique event and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's some preparation and then there's some unpacking time coming home from that. And, uh, yeah, I just have, uh, between that and my day job, I'm what, I'm like day 16 or something now without a day off. So I'm kind of tired. <laughs> Material, man. <clears throat> That's part of what the retirement's about. It's like trying to just remember to take some time to myself. And if I say I'm retired, then I'll hopefully do that. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I don't think I'm working tomorrow. No? Well, we'll see. We'll see, eh? I mean, no, I should do some posts. I should just go to the post office. Mm. Oh, I have a painting. This is, this is a real issue here that I need your advice on. Um, I sent a painting to this guy with a tracking number. Mm -hmm. It's there. It sits around. He doesn't pick it up. Mm -hmm. It gets sent back to me. Mm -hmm. Bro, I paid $80 to ship it. So now, they want $80 to unlock it and $80 to ship it again. What do you mean $80 to unlock it? They won't give it to me unless I give them $80. The post office? Yeah, they have it. Because it came back from the spot that it cost $80 to go to. So now oh, you checked return at my expense, eh? Yeah. Okay. So now it's back. Oh, so it was abandoned, bro. This is a piece of painting. This is a, a painting. I'm not even sure what it is at the moment. Mm -hmm. So there it is. In a box. And, uh... What do they have to do? Well, honestly, that situation's never happened to me. That's pretty, pretty crappy on the client's part for not picking up the thing they ordered. The guy paid you already? Of course. And has he contacted you and asked where his painting is and what's going on? He contacted me that he didn't check his tracking. Uh, and when you finally went, they were like, yeah, we sent it back. Okay. Like, okay, so I messaged you when I get it back. Now I got it back, and I said, yeah, it's going to cost <clears throat> 160 
Mm-hmm. This whole shebang is eight thousand one sixty. At the end of the day, it's honestly the client's fault and not yours. So as much as the right, like, look, here's where it sucks for artists when it comes down to well, the client's always right because look, in this case, the client's not right. Like you paid for something, you shipped it to them. The client abandoned the package and didn't take notice on their door and go to the post office and pick it up in a timely manner and you shouldn't be held responsible for paying for that it shouldn't come out of your pocket it shouldn't affect your business and your profit margins because they didn't hold up their end of the bargain so at the end of the day it's unfair for that person to expect you to to cover the bill um, it sucks as a business owner or as like a salesperson to have to tell your client like look Ed, I know it sucks but unfortunately like if you want me to send that painting to you you're gonna have to pay the shipping because uh, I can't afford to take it out of my wallet it wasn't my fault and uh, I held up my end of the bargain I shipped it I sent you the tracking number you didn't pick it up mm. that's that's not my fault you know, if you typed in the address wrong and you didn't pick it up because you shipped it to the wrong address, that's the a whole other is, story. The worst part is I charged them 40 on the ship and it was 80 and I covered it. I was like, yeah, whatever, I covered it. So yeah, you, you can't... And then, and now it's 160. Mm -hmm. it's just like, <sighs> that's terrible. It's uh, That's a shitty situation. That uh, it's unfortunate that that happens, but because uh, honestly, I, a lot of times I've seen artists get a bad rap about fulfilling their end of the bargain, that they take a long time to send out paintings. Germ and I were very professional with that. If you place an order with us, we ship your stuff out ASAP. We don't make you wait months or even weeks. You'll usually get your stuff within, you know, business days time. You know, we're not Amazon. It's not going to be overnight. But uh, within four or five, six business days, you'll have your stuff if you place an order with us. So um, when a client doesn't fulfill their end of the bargain, or if a client gives us the wrong address, which has happened to me, like I've had somebody give me the wrong address and I shipped them their thing, and then they literally didn't let me know for like six weeks. Finally, he wrote me back six weeks later like, hey, I never got my thing. And I'm like, well, I sent it to this address. And he's like, bro, I haven't lived at that address for five years. And I'm like, well, bro, that's the address in your PayPal that's under the I have to send it to that address or else I don't have seller protection from. So if you didn't double check your address that's on your PayPal, like, that's not my fault. And the guy got pretty upset with me and, you know, asked me to send him his thing again. And I'm like, look, A, I already shipped it. B, I lost the product because I called the post office and whoever lives at that address now accepted the package. So, like, you can either go knock on their door and ask them where that thing that you ordered from me is. Or, like, there's not much I can do about it, you know. Like, they stole it from you at that point. It's literally a theft and you should just, you should call the post office and say this package was addressed to me I sent you the tracking number you know I sent it you know it was addressed to you it's on the bill so call like what was it it was a blanket mm -hmm. <clears throat> one of my woven blankets so anyway um, you know things like that where the client is wrong sorry the clients not always right if, if you made a mistake and sent me the wrong address it's not my business's expense to fix that for you it's your problem <laughs> And if that's going to make you not want to do business with me in the future, well, that's okay. I don't want to do business with you in the future if you're going to expect me to pay $100 plus out of my pocket because you can't fill in an address properly or because you didn't take the time to go pick up the package that got there and that I know the post office put at least three notices on your door before they shipped it back to me. You know, like that's not my problem. I'd, lo I'd love to be able to send it to you. I'd love to be made of money and be like, ah, oh, don't worry about it, man. Here, I can ship it to you, the 160 bucks. Don't worry. My kids don't need that money. My, my, my fridge is full. I'm independently wealthy. Sure, here you go. But that's not the case when you're running a small business as an artist, you know, for, for most people. No, I'd love to say those lines. <laughs> that, that, that sounded amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know... Excuse me for just being honest. Uh, no, yeah, sometimes you need but, to hear that. You know, and sometimes clients need to hear that, and like people that buy art and collect art need to hear that. Because the one time that their thing takes longer to get there than it should, because it's uh, Christmas time. For example, Christmas time. I, I even put a note on my website that says around Christmas time from the middle of November until around 
you know, after Christmas, things are going to take longer than usual. If you order from me uh, in June and I mail it the next day, it's probably going to get to your door in four or five days. If you order it from me December 12th, Mail's full of mail at that time of year. It's not my fault if things take longer. So, like, if something takes eight days and you order it right before Christmas and you expected it to be there for Christmas and it said right on the page where you check out, orders placed after December 12th cannot be get on or after December 12th cannot be guaranteed to arrive before Christmas, don't write me a letter and say, Hey, man, it's Christmas tomorrow. Where's my thing? Like, hey, man, you placed the order from the thing where it has the disclaimer that if you place the order on that date or after, it's not going to be there before Christmas, or probably not. Like, there's a chance it is, but you're gambling at that point. So, that's another situation that's happened to me where, like, the client's not always right. That should be the episode of this one. Germ's retiring and the client's not always right. Mm -hmm. So, Germ, it's your retirement party, I guess. That's why I had cake. That's why you like cake. And there's muffins out there too. Mm -hmm. Don't think I have forgotten about yeah, the muffins. Yeah, there's definitely muffins and I haven't tried the muffins yet. She, the muffins? She, I think she's like, she knows what she's doing. She's like a dealer. She gives you, she like, because I bought a cake and then she gave me the muffins for free. So like, Whoa. I'm pretty sure it's like, you know. And she could probably make those muffins into a big cake and that's probably what the... Probably that so. That chocolate thing is probably the chocolate cake. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I can, I'm, we're, we're going to have to try these. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Was but, the chocolate cake going to have a topping? It no. No, but food? I would like to make my own icing. How? Uh, with that. Cream cheese? No, yogurt. The 10% yogurt. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not liquidy or uh, No, it's not liquidy. It's 10% fat, bro. You've had this before, haven't you? Mm. Yeah, it's 10% fat, so just mix a little bit of stevia or whatever. Not a lot, just enough to like layer it. Actually, I might do that on my next piece of cake. Yeah, that's the ticket. Or on the muffin, even. On the muffin, bro. I'm going to put it on the muffin, and then it's going to become a cupcake, and it's no longer a muffin. <clears throat> the joys of retirement. The joys of retirement and keto diet. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. See, I've, I've unintentionally done a social media retirement for the last two weeks, I guess, because I've, I, I posted a little bit about my events, though, and actually it's kind of funny. Those posts did, did a pretty good reach, which is rare, so that's, that's awesome, um, and I guess it shows everyone that I'm out there doing stuff still, you know, just because I'm not posting on social media all the time doesn't mean I'm not doing nothing on my art career. Uh, I'm always working on something. Right now, I'm actually working on something cool that's like, it, it, it's... It's more for my art collection than my art career. It's more for Germ's ex art career. But that's pretty cool because, like, I'm going to be one of the few people that, that's going to have a piece from Germ D after he retired. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like the Apre retirement special. And it's going to be fantastic. In fact, it might force him to come out of retirement. We'll see. <clears throat> There'll be the post retirement phase, don't worry about it. Hmm. There's got to be a post retirement phase. We'll start calling it post retirement. Yeah, it's like the it's it's like the you know the going away tour and then the coming back tour. First we get the cake <laughs> recipe. The cake then recipe. Then we get the money. Then we get the power. Mm. And then we become artists. See, I I already got the I, I already getting the money. I don't need the cake recipe. I'm getting the money from my advertising sales power. But that's not a rush. For me, it is. It's not a rush. For me, it's For such a rush. It's such a rush. When Turn somebody cake. says cake yes, the money. bang. It, I, the thing is, is like I'm, I'm, on, I'm honestly a little bit of an addict to sales. I worked in sales my entire adult life, and selling art, when I was selling art often and people were hitting my website, and I was, there, I was making 20 sales a week through my website, whether it was stickers or blah, blah, blah. I was just getting constant sales. I was constantly getting that adrenaline rush. But with social media making my you know, flow uh, to go from you know, a nice river to a trickle, um, I wasn't getting that rush anymore as much, and it wasn't keeping me motivated to keep working on my art career as much. Now I'm getting that rush from other places, I'm getting money, I'm getting debts paid off. Um, I was able to do these events, and like I lost money this weekend at Buddha Bazaar, or barely broke even, let's say. I didn't lose a ton of money, but I barely broke, broke even. And um, it's not devastating. It's not like I can't pay the rent and now I have to scramble to find money from somewhere else and I, I don't have food in the fridge and like I'm not getting home going, oh my god, what the fuck am I going to do? Now I have cake. <clears throat> now I have cake and I can eat it too. 
<laughs> so yeah, so that's a benefit. So I mean, we were also talking before the camera went on um, that uh, one thing I said earlier in an earlier episode, like episode four or five before I had gotten a job, that once you have a job and your income comes from other places, it is really hard to find the same level of motivation to work as hard on your art career because um, the money is coming from somewhere else. So when I get home at night, if I'm feeling a little tired or if there's a special on TV that I want to watch or whatever, like it's a lot easier to just make the decision like, oh, you know what? Okay, it's not the end of the world if I don't make a post today. It's not the end of the world if I don't do this or that or the other thing. And that kind of thinking can become addictive too. Like that, oh, don't worry, if I didn't worry about it today, and then it can lead to the opposite to thing, which is like, after a few days of doing that, you can start to feel guilty, uh, like, and then it feels like you have a lot to do, and you feel overwhelmed, for me anyway. Um, so, you know, there's uh, there's two sides to having uh, having a job and an income to, to support your art career. Um, it can make life more stable and a lot uh, easier. It can give you money to invest in your art career for things like doing events, for things like buying the chair to stay elevated and buying the banner to make your table look good and buying the tent to do outdoor things and buying all the merch to have at your table to make yourself, to make your art look more professional and have many items accessible to many different people at many different price points, etc. So all of that stuff takes money. So whether your money is coming from your art career or whether it's coming from a job investing your money back into your art career um, is is important and investing your time is is too so right now I'm the money part is isn't that as complicated I'm, I'm finding a harder time motivating myself to invest the time in it right now to be I think you got frankly a healthy honest balance. Okay. you got a healthy balance you're creating and you're also taking time to enjoy life again after working so hard on the art career mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's uh, part of the retirement philosophy, mm -hmm. you know, is um, doing your artist, you're always on, you're always on, and you're always thinking about the next thing you can do. Sometimes you just want to put on a different mask. And just say, sorry, y'all, mm -hmm. I'm retired. Right. Sorry, oh. <laughs> it's, uh, it's different, different, different me time. I'm hiding from... Uh, from social media for a bit and uh, just doing in-person events. You're tired for social media, that's for sure. Yeah, like definitely. For Mr. I was on nine social medias every day, like for, you know, months and months. It was a long time I was really into the social media thing and like it got to me eventually. <laughs> but uh, it, also, it also gave me a chance to step back and look at my art career from a little bit of a bigger view and see that because I was working so hard on it. I was, I didn't have a good balance in my life, and I didn't, I wasn't really happy. It, it wasn't really something that I was enjoying as much anymore because it was, it wasn't giving me that rush of sales. It wasn't really covering my bills. I was going into debt doing it, and um, it's hard to stay passionate and positive about something that's driving you into debt and and and. And say, and eating up your time so that your you know relationships have suffer around it, um, you know relationships with whoever your family, your friends, your whatever your social circle, which was happening to me. I was you know very I didn't have money to take the bus. People would invite me places, and I didn't have four bucks to take the bus. I'm like, look, I have like eight bucks to last me the week, and uh, you know I gotta eat. So like I'm buying some uh, some rice and uh, some bread and like uh, margarine and <laughs> whatever like. You know, like, I, I sacrifice for my art career a lot, and uh, eventually the sacrifices, like, just didn't add up to, 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 like, being enjoyable anymore, so that's why I went and got the job, and, uh, you know, we'll see how it all evolves, and that's another reason that Jerm and I are doing Arty Time, because, uh, we want to document the phases and ups and downs of an art career, um, and the different... Uh, ways that will evolve to deal with the different um, challenges that come up along the way, whether it be social media algorithms, or whether it be realizing that we need a chair <laughs> to sit higher up on, or whether it be retiring. Um, 
But all has to do with like it's all the same thing when you're talking about the algorithms and the thing that you went through. I'm trying to weather that storm by our diary. Mm. And just taking it easy, not pushing, just doing my thing. And then eventually there'll be post retirement. I'll come out of retirement when things are better. Mm. When I've decided to use new apps and have new social media philosophies, you know? Mm -hmm. About, I don't know, letting the content creators have their say and not necessarily let money and ads truly just destroy everything. Like, I, I, there's got to be a social media where it costs a dollar a year to be a member, and there's no ads. You only see stuff from pages that you like, and, like... No, because once we pay, they're going to now no, make no, no, extra no. money with the ads. I don't care. No, there's not going to be ads, because if a billion people are paying a year, then there's, there's an entrepreneur out there who's not going to sell his soul for... For his billion a year. He'll keep the company. He won't put it public. There won't be shareholders. And he'll be like, fuck you. I'm making a billion dollars a year. I don't need to make 10 billion. I'm happy with a billion. And that person is going to create the social media that everyone in the world will want to join. Because everyone's going to see what they want to see. Not what the social media platform decides they want you to see. Based on what their advertisers are paying. Because if you're paying that dollar a year. And whatever. You know like. So what if they raise it to two dollars a year or three dollars a year? If you're if you're getting what you want out of it, I don't care. Charge me twenty nine ninety nine a month. I'd rather pay that for the old Facebook than be be exposed to the Facebook the way it is today. Even with ad blocks, I mean, you still end up seeing trash on Facebook. Even following all the awesome things, you still end up seeing trash on Facebook. And so Instagram's getting worse by the day too. You know, and they're removing the social proof of how many likes people are getting. Slowly they're testing that out. So it's like it's it's harder and harder to get seen on there. It's harder and harder to get new people to follow you. Because if new people don't see 2,000 people followed you, and we as content creators spent years building up that social proof, and now they're taking it away. So it's like all that work we did for years and years and years uh, attracting people to their platform as much as, you know, their platform allowed us to expose our art is, I don't know, it feels like being held hostage. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't like that feeling. And, I, and neither does almost any other small business owner that I know. And, um, you know, that's why they have the issues they do as, um, as platforms for content. That's why a lot of your favorite content creators, you never see anything from them anymore because they just got fed up trying to deal with the bullshit. Yeah, there's going to be people that are going to do less and less. <clears throat> I'm one of them. I used to post twice a day, religiously. Um, because back in the day when algorithms on Facebook were chronological, you'd have people, like I had people following me in Europe and people following me in America and Canada and whatever. There was very different time zones. And if you didn't post for your European fans, they wouldn't see anything of your post because they'd have to scroll seven or ten hours back into their feed. So I used to post twice a day, every day, um, when I was first getting growing on Facebook. Um, <laughs> now it's been like, I don't know, I think other than the posts I posted about my events, I haven't posted new art or a new product or anything in about 20 days or 18 days or something like that on Facebook. And I stopped posting on Instagram because Instagram just banned me from, you know, liking, commenting, uh, following people. Probably because of the fact I'm using a third-party app, which we spoke about in the last uh, episode. I don't use social medias on my phone just because it's pollution that uh, I don't need on my phone. And, um, yeah, so um, Facebook and Instagram are pretty much dead to me, like, it's as much as... So uh, we're both retired. Yeah, we're both sort of retired in our this own is retirement. ways. retirement. This episode is called Retirement. Retirement it's Party true. and uh, Jim Carrey, Jordan... We'll come back. We'll make our comeback. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. They will not keep us down. They can keep us down. We'll post on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, then we'll post on TikTok or wherever else we need to post or whatever else we need to do. Like, right now, what I need to do is finish paying my debts back so that I can hire a social media person. So, like, we're still moving. I'm still moving towards that. I don't know what your long-term plan is, but I, I have one. I'm Sweet glad Susie. I have one. Chewy Susie. The Chewy Susie. I eh? tried my Chewy Susie. Mm. I can see myself doing that for a week. Mm -hmm. I can see you doing. <laughs> I can see you doing things for like three days. That's about your limit. Yeah. And then I'll have, <laughs> I'll have like a painting about it, and I'll start the painting. The mm. Chewy Susie week. 
The Chewy Susie. Like, who knows? Like, the Chewy Susie can make money. The Chewy make... Susie does make money. I just bought one <laughs> for 28 bucks. <laughs> and I would buy one too. <laughs> it's so good. It is. It okay, is. so th that's my plan. And then after that, maybe come out of retirement. Mm. Who knows? Have you listened to the new Tool album? No. You haven't? No. I haven't listened to it either. They made me wait 10 years to get it. No, I just saw your tattoo there with the eye, so that's what made me think of it. I saw a poster for They made me wait 10 years for hearing it, so I'm going to make them wait 10 years before I buy it. Or, and like, I, I'm not in a rush to listen to it. Well, that's why um, you got to say some a little bit on, on uh, social media. You can't be, like, fully retired. Mm -hmm. You still got to make your jokes here and there, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I mean if it's the tool thing. If like, you... ideally, and, like, ideally, you want to be posting daily. Just ideally, that's what it is. You want to post every day. You want to be an episode every day so people have that regularity in their schedule and your schedule. Um, right now, I'm not taking my own advice on that, and... Um, I kind of sucked for that. Got to admit, I kind of sucked for that. I really should get back into it. Hard to find that fucking motivation, especially after I'm tired 16 days in a row. No day off, no sleep in, no day that I don't have to set an alarm the next day. So it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's catching up to me. But uh, this Saturday is my first day off, and it'll be 19 days in a row. I'm no day off by the time Saturday rolls around, so I'm gonna have a You're nice sleep in. Yeah, it's gonna, gonna have some cake. I'm gonna have some of that new uh, cake, Susie, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, gonna Listen, be a you nice buy your two Susie, but that's when I, that's probably I'll when I'm gonna get back into the art more because I'm gonna have time. I'm gonna be relaxed. I'm not gonna feel stressed. I'm not gonna feel like it's it's more work on top of work that I just came home from work. Mm -hmm. Like. That's where I'm at right now. When I come home from work, I don't feel like doing more work. I already did work, made my money, I'm good, kind of want to relax now. And like, I, I'm still painting a lot. That's the thing. I actually have paintings that I haven't released yet, just because it's like I'm too lazy to do the social media thing. Take the picture, upload it to my website, upload it to the social uh, media. Write the, post, it's write the blog. It's long. So, uh, but um, good news is there's new art like in the pipeline ready to show you guys once I get that motivation have that day off like I'll take the picture and I'll get some stuff up there there's some new shoes coming ready to show you um, there's a new crystal grid coming out there's uh, what else like there's I have many shoes there's there's hoodies coming out that I haven't released online yet um, what else there's other things that I have there's a whole painting Pacific Northwest with a whole line of products coming behind it that I haven't shared so like you know, there's things coming, and, um, like, that's, that's the one thing, like, about, like, not, not being as active is, like, I, I do have a lot of, like, content ready to get, um, ready to go out once, like, I get that fire lit again, and whatever, everybody needs a break, everybody needs to relax a little bit in their life, and find a good work-life balance, um, you know, part of uh, part of starting a business back when I was just getting sober from alcohol and stuff like that. A lot of other entrepreneurs who, um, you know, were sober too, and were, were were they told me they're like, look, once you start your own business, you're probably going to become a workaholic and you're going to suffer for it. And uh, it's a lesson that a lot of entrepreneurs have to go through when they're like that addictive personality. So that's kind of what happened to me. I'm like, oh, no, no, that won't happen to me. Don't worry, I'll find my balance. And then, you know, I end up fucking fully addicted into my art career. No time for personal life and uh, no money. Everything's going into my art career and all my time and all my effort. And then when, like, that kind of stopped, stopped really working, it was like I had to look around and be like, shit, what did I do? You know, I have, like, no time for friends. I had no time for personal you know, hobbies and stuff outside of my art career, um, you know, anything I did that wasn't r directly related to my art career felt like uh, I was wasting time that I needed to do because I needed to make the money to pay my bills from my art and, like, keep it all going, so, yeah, so there's, there's, there's a balance to be found, yeah, and you're better off doing that for the long run and having endurance than blowing a tire and, uh, yeah, and like freaking out. And we spoke, we had a whole episode episode calling Get Help about like having people help you, volunteers and whatever, uh, hiring people. Um, and I read a quote earlier today that said like, you go f faster alone, but you go farther together. 
So like, man, I really did. I went far alone. I my I went fast. I went yeah, I went fast alone. My art career went from my first painting to I quit my job to do art full time in under three years. But then I didn't build a team to help me keep that going. I kept trying to do it alone and at the time when all I had to do was hit share on Facebook three hundred times a day and I wouldn't get blocked for doing that, then I didn't need a team to do that. I took it took forty minutes. And then, you know, the the rest of the day I was replying to people, but that was fun because it was interacting with all kinds of people who were super into my art. And those are the people that ended up buying stuff from me, you know. So, but then once I started getting blocked and everything, anyway, we've talked about the Facebook algorithm bullshit a lot. It's like, now we're talking about, like, what else we can do to get um, get out there and to, uh, to keep going and finding a balance in life is one of those things that's uh, that's important for long term your business and your, your mental health too mm -hmm. well I'm starting to realize that like a lot of the what I'm doing is just entertaining mm -hmm. so the storyline is always important mm -hmm. and um, you know this is the retirement saga <laughs> like, what was that there was golf it's everything you wanted in retirement maybe there'll be a, a jacuzzi cruise but you're on a jacuzzi, on a cruise. Are you going to play shuffleboard? It's yes. It's not retirement if there's no shuffleboard. My favorite one is that. There needs to be a shuffleboard. My favorite one is where you throw the, the cachon and then. Uh, throw the cachon. The little um, wood ball and then you try and throw those other things. It's close. Yeah. Okay. That game's the best. Yeah. That game's the best. Or are, are you talking patonk or bocce? They're both in the same, but one is made There's, out of wood. Yeah, I don't know. They're similar. Watch anyway. wood, but the other one is like uh, metal. Cool. That's a good game, bro. You knock everyone else out of the way. It's like curling, but on grass. In my retirement years, I'd like to start that. Start playing that. Cool. What else is? Are you gonna get like a white pants and white shoes and go to Florida for the winter? I just made the white shirt today. You saw it. You know, you need white pants and white shoes. The white shirt is like okay, but. Okay, all if white. You're gonna be really retired. Yeah, you need to wear white shoes and white white pants, and they've got to be like Payless shoe store shoes. Mm, or, I and with, with some with some orthotics in them, like your Doctor Scholl's at the very least. Okay, I'll make. If that. you're gonna be golfing, you need some comfy shoes. And oh, if, for sure. if you're gonna be retired, you're gonna be on a fixed income, so you need to watch your pennies and get those Payless. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. The retirement also makes you save money. Retirement makes you save money. It also means you should probably start getting up at like 4.30 a.m. Well, it's almost 4.30 a.m. Start calling people at 8 a.m. in the morning because you've been awake for four hours already and you forget that most people sleep in on Saturdays because you're retired and you don't know what day of the week it is anymore. That's, yeah, I already have that going for me. So then you get, like, people angry at you for waking them up. And, I don't have a phone. But then you're like, oh, yeah, ha, 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 I'm retired. Huh, I forgot. Huh. That's how it should go. I think he paints a thing. I don't know. It, the, the real joke is that I've been retired. I've been retired for whatever well, the last time I worked at a dumb job. Mm -hmm. And it, painting is something that you can do while retired. Mm-hmm. You never retire as a painter, really. No, I don't think so. That's I don't think ongoing, artists can retire. The ongoing joke really is retire. that eventually it's going to be like he's doing the same thing, even though he's retired. But this is what you would do if you retired, and this makes a lot of money if you do it right. Mm -hmm. If you can sell art, then you know you quit your job in three years. Mm -hmm. You technically retired. Well, that's pretty much what I used to tell people all the time when they asked me what I did when I was, like, just making my first, uh, you know, big art sales. I'm like, I feel like I'm retired, you know, I get to do what I love every day, and it's amazing. I get to associate with the people that I want to and do what I want to do all day, every day. And it was awesome. And I'll come back to that eventually, um, just finding the right avenue to reach, uh, reach the right people again, and a lot of people quickly again. And it'll come. I'm, I'm no doubt it will. And uh, keeping up my website, keeping up appearances, and doing lots of local events is another way to do that because, you know, at these local events, you never know who you're who you're going to meet, and um, you know, it's uh, it's it's always important to get FaceTime when you're doing uh, doing a creative 
business like we are. Wouldn't you say? Like you build your business mostly on FaceTime, where I, I like, and FaceTime. I don't mean Facebook messaging. I mean actually being in front of people face to face. Um, whereas I built most of my business online. Right now, my business, I'm working for someone else. His business, he's not working for someone else. So take from that what you will. I think FaceTime is something that I should have invested more time in when I was also doing the online thing. You can do it online too. You can do FaceTime. It's just showing your face. Showing the human face. But meeting someone face to face and looking them in the eye and having a conversation with them and shaking their hand is a di much different connection than adding someone on a social media. That Bro, you I believe that there's a subtle world where everyone's vibration towards you makes up what happens to you. Mm -hmm. So by meeting them, you're assuring that it's one way or the other. And try not to have too many bad juju people. Mm -hmm. Bad juju people you control them. And like, oh, I got that over there. This sort of world. They're caught filming that guy in the courtroom, and uh, he's just sort of bad jujuing me out there. I have no idea what you're talking about. I had court. Didn't oh, tell you? No, he didn't tell me. Oh, I went to court. Charges were dropped, my friend. But uh, they caught me filming in the courtroom, and they had cops around me and said, Give me a phone, give me a phone. And then they erased the footage on my phone. It was a really bad vibe at the end. That sucks. Yeah. If I got away, all charges dropped. All right, good. Well, that's good, I guess. Mm-hmm. It would suck to spend your retirement years in jail. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't jail. It was like criminal because you don't go to court, it becomes criminal. Mm -hmm. Condemned. Condemned yeah. of the Queen's Court. You did not appear. Yeah, the big scam. And then you have mm -hmm. to appear and then like, sign this. And you're like, no. Mm -hmm. All right, charges dropped. That's literally what happened. Mm -hmm. They want you to sign this. I will not sign that. All right, then we drop all charges. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you really? All right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, see, I don't have a lot of experience with the courts. The only experience I have dealing with courts and lawyers was my divorce, and other than that. It's and weird. I would, prefer, I would prefer to not be the case that there's giant buildings that handle matters mm. of society. It's really like, it's a lot there. But I guess we need to some degree, we need to have law, but this is madness. Mm -hmm. It's madness. You go in there, it's just like, it's the worst. I suppose the vibe is the worst. You have people who have a big sense of authority in the judge robe or the cop uniform or the lawyer. Well, at least, at least now they can't come up like, with like hey. terrible ways to torture you and try and get you to confess the things you didn't do and like. Yeah. No, they just get you to sign like reasonable agreements. Yes. Just sign this reasonable agreement, and as soon as you sign it, now you're saying that you can't do this, this, and this, and if they catch you doing this, this, and this, that will be more reasonable agreements. Mm -hmm. And something like you can't be near a park. You can't go in the air park. You can't be out at night. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know? You can't yeah. be out at night, you're done. So yeah, I know, I know people who had the you can't be out after 10 p.m. thing and that's, for a while. But that's not legal to, to impose it on someone, but it's legal if you agree and sign it. Mm. And that's what will end up happening. You just, they just sign this. Okay, then. You can't be out at night. And then you're like, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a little worried about that kind of stuff. I'm allowed at night. I can come to your house. Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. And if ever it gets too crazy, I'll just move to Ontario. Worst case, Ontario. <laughs> Worst case, Ontario. There you yeah. go. More New Brunswick, whatever. That's the funniest thing about it. You know, like, oh, I'm not allowed and I owe you money? Yeah. <laughs> Cross the border? Okay, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I, I definitely knew people that lived in Costa Rica because they owed lots of people or institutions money in, in the States and they just people fled and never went back. So new, but whatever, new life. Yeah, it don't was, all, it was also harder for them to build a life there, like, well, get, of course. you know, because they don't have any credit and they can get a bank account and things like that. Anyway, there's, where there's a will, there's a way. Let's put it that way. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's a big, uh, factor in, like, an underlying theme in arty time. Where there's a will, there's a way. Like, you'll always find a way, and that's part of what our... Our, our, our constant evolution of the way that we make our art careers work is um, is hopefully something that uh, you know people can learn from and that will learn from. I know I, I watch all our episodes. Jeremy usually doesn't watch episodes after we post them up. I usually watch them 
because I go post them on my own channel and post them on my website to have a nice archive of them. And usually when I'm doing that, like I'll download it and like as I go to it to download it, it's playing and it just leave it play while I'm doing all the rest of the stuff. Um, and you know, it's, it's very different listening to myself after and listening to what we're talking about because it all happens so fast. And then when I'm listening to it again, like sometimes I'll catch stuff and I'll be like, oh, that was pretty, that was pretty awesome what we said there. Or like, I'll forget something that we talked about that was like, oh yeah, you know, like, I should pay more attention to what I'm saying on Arty time because it's good advice and I'm not doing it in my own career right now. And, you know, like, um, I, I'm a sales manager in a call center. And <laughs> when I work in a call center, I've always been a person like as a manager who believe that I shouldn't be the manager if I can't sell the product that I'm managing people to sell. So I, I never believed in working for a manager that wasn't a sales guy who got promoted because like otherwise you, you can't tell me how to do my job if you never did my job. So I, I kind of feel that same way with art with art and hosting arty time. So art is just in a lull of sales. Yeah, well, I'm in a lull of, like, not doing art full-time right now. My income's coming from somewhere else, so sometimes, like, you know, that gets to me, where I'm like, ah, oh, like, I'm supposed to be this art podcast host and giving people all this amazing business advice, and I have this art business and all these products I sell, blah, 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 blah. but at the end of the day, I'm working somewhere else. So, like, there's... Yeah, but still... A little bit of resentment there, or still towards fucking Facebook and everything else, but yeah. But it could just be for now, because now that you have a little bit more income, you can come back into your art career mm -hmm. in a new way. Yeah, you and like I said, I have that plan. Like the Albanian, the Albanian, Air the Max, Air Joner. Yeah, the banner, the Albanian wife, the high chair, Very good. the cake, and eating it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is always like there is always a hope, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And it's not really about just giving up. It's about like mm -hmm. adapting. To the new, uh, to the new playing field. Because mm -hmm. you'll still make art. And the thing about that's cool about art is it's like chronological in the sense that like, this could be five years old, and that's dope. Mm -hmm. And you can't just paint one and say that it's five years old. That's lame. No, yeah, and like you actually art have a whole bunch. Like while well, this art lull is happening for me, I'm building up my art bank, and then eventually, like 17. because the fact my art is very consistent in style, even during this lull and whatever, I'm still painting stuff in the same style. I might be painting a little less, but I'm still building up my art bank and making deposits in it regularly. And I'm still painting in the same style. So eventually, either social media is going to blow up again and somewhere is going to come along that makes it really easy for content creators to reach their fans again. And or, um, you know, galleries are going to notice that, hey, this guy is very consistent and there's not a lot of artists that do that. Um, you know, maybe we should represent him and maybe I'm going to end up getting my career going again that way um, or blowing up again that way. And you never know, um, as long as you keep the faith and keep on creating and don't give up and keep getting your stuff out there and keep hosting Artie Time once a week or two, like, keep getting, um, keep focused on it at least a little bit um, and keep some momentum. I don't think there was many artists that were, that were big in their younger years, mm -hmm. but it takes their younger years to make them big later. Mm -hmm. I think most artists pop at 40 and stuff like that. Yeah. And then it's because they have been doing it for so long that it's... Mm -hmm. What propels them? Mm -hmm. They're the ones who make it, basically. Mm -hmm. You're the ones fall, stop doing it at 40. And you're more pronounced as an artist as you get older. Mm -hmm. If you see a 50 year old artist, he's definitely different than his other peers. Mm -hmm. So keep at it, basically. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. going to go through ups and downs, but if you keep at it, you'll be that funky character that everyone will talk about mm -hmm. and the buyer. Mm -hmm. Like, um, the art world is full of stories of, like, um, you know, p artists being discovered by, you know, big gallery owners and or bands that use their art on their covers and now, like, all their fans are fans of this or that artist, stuff like that. Those kind of stories happen all the time where art, art careers blow up overnight out of nowhere, um... And then where artists have comebacks after they kind of faded out of the scene for whatever reason for a while. Maybe the art they were doing is out of fashion. Maybe the whatever, you know, and that's partially why I do mandalas and stick with them even in between the, the 80s inspired stuff like this. 
uh, is because I think mandalas are timeless. There's always going to be people that will resonate with symmetry just on a very, um, you know, uh, base level. When a human looks at a nice, beautiful, symmetrical, colorful pattern, there's something that captures their attention. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, we're going to call it a, a day. And we're going to have some muffins. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to have our retirement muffin party on on Artie time? I'll go. I'll go around and get some muffins. All right. So. All right. Let me get muffins. So now that we're retired, we're about to have low carb paleo muffins. I'm really looking forward to this recipe so that I don't have to pay thirty dollars for a cake. But I'm willing to pay thirty dollars for this cake. And quite a bit more for the recipe. <laughs> Here we go. Did you explain what it was? It was like um, cinnamon. Honestly, I she didn't explain what the one in the middle is. I yeah. think this one's the orange, and I think that one's the chocolate. But I haven't tried this one, so I'm gonna try this one. It looks like a lemon or poppy seed. It smells like cinnamony. This one's that the same thing that I just had? I think so. Oh. I'm I'm trying to peel off the thing and there is no thing. No. Like it was obviously baked in a little thing. That's no, what it is. Right, it's used. I don't wanna What is it? It's delicious. It's lemon. Mm. Lemon poppy seed, I think. Mm-hmm. Mmm. So congratulations on your retirement. Let's cheers. To retirement. To retirement. Mmm. It is that same cake again. Mm hmm In muffin form. This isn't right. Mmm. This isn't right. So since it's keto, it's mostly fat, so like the inside is all, um, is that one chewy too? It's pretty chewy, yeah. Chewy and gooey? Mm hmm Yeah, um, just like as a final note, like, if you've got any digestive health problems, if you've got any inflammation problems, if you're trying to lose weight, get on the keto diet. Like, look into it. It's amazing. I went on it a year ago, and um, it changed my health drastically. I lost about 60 pounds. And like totally cleared up. Uh, I had IBS for like three years, irritable bowel syndrome, which really sucked. And was part of the reason that it made it really hard for me to keep my art career going um, because I was uh, depressed. My body wasn't absorbing nutrients. I was cranky and sad. I slept, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day. Um, but getting on keto diet cured that and, and helped me lose 60 pounds. I feel like I have more energy than I have in a long time. Um, you know, I'm able to think better. Uh, I was able to recognize the fact that, hey, my work-life balance is way out of whack. I got to get that under control a little bit. And, you know, I was able to make the decision to go get a job. Whereas when I had IBS, I was worried about going to get a job because I was worried I'd get fired for going to the bathroom 20 times during my shift, you know, or that the bosses would think I'm a cokehead running off to the bathroom to do blow every, you know, 10 minutes or whatever when I'm really going to have diarrhea. <laughs> And I, it's just nervous leaving the house, you know, you suddenly have to go all the time. Now I don't have that problem anymore, and thanks to keto diet. So, yeah. Mm. Did, did you, um, start? Oh, yeah, that's what I was way into keto. I'm pretty sure. We haven't been doing it for a year, no way. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm. The noise it made? Mm. Sounds like... Oh, you're a thing. <laughs> oh. Nah, that one. That one's untouchable. I don't know, that one's pretty good too. But I haven't had this one. It's like a, an afternoon uh, crumpet with a tea, you know? Mm -hmm. That's an all round crack ball. <laughs> that is just too much. Mm. Well, now I need to eat the crack ball. No, well, do it. You're just going to remember that it's like... Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. But this is probably the way that it's going to be in the future. All the snacks are going to be like um, very low carb. Because that's the thing that is causing the inflammation and the IBS. Because mm -hmm. all we really did, and you can do it if you're vegetarian, vegan, meat eater, all people can be keto. And it just strictly means that you're not having carbs. Mm -hmm. That's all it really is. And, and high fats. Mm -hmm. But fats can be butter, uh, oils, mm -hmm. coconut oil. So there can be vegans and all types of things that are going on this. Mm -hmm. And then the cool thing is, you obviously want to have the muffins and the chocolate chips, cookies and all that stuff. And they're coming up with ways where you totally can. Mm -hmm. mm. And maybe this is how it was back in the day. Hmm. But they were good for you, you know? Yeah, that was fucking delicious. Mm. So, this has been already time. We'll try and get the Lazy Susie recipe for you guys. We're working on it. I'll come out of the time for that. And, um, yeah. So... I guess uh, in the already time spirit, already on, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Episode 24. Yep, episode 24. So, like, we should start it with, like, a boop, boop, beep, doop. Did you ever watch 24? No. Oh. Bro, that show was, doop, like, doop. crack. That doop, show doop. was, like, crack. What? Beep. Is this, like a, is this a girl who's kidnapped or something? Which is uh, Kiefer Sutherland. There was like a bunch of seasons. Anyway, yeah, don't start watching that. If you've never watched 24, do not start watching it. It's seriously like having a crack habit. You're going to be like, ah, oh, just one more episode, just one more episode, just one more episode. Two hours before you have to go to work, you're going to be like, fuck it, I have to be at work in two hours anyway. I'm just going to watch two more episodes and go to work without sleeping. For real? Yes. They were the first show that was like broadcast that way. Anyway, whatever. If you're into it, you're into it. If you're not, you're not. Peace.